During the horrific Rwandan genocide in 1994, some 800,000 people, mainly ethnic Tutsis, died at the hands of ethnic Hutus. The extreme violence occurred across the Central African country, although less so in one remote northern town. VOS Edward Rema explains. Before the Rwandan genocide, the town of Giti, according to its mayor at the time, was special. What made Giti unique at the time is the way we lived in harmony, regardless of our ethnicity. We used to give each other gifts of cows, and we intermarried. There was no division among us. Edward Sewishumba was the mayor of Giti, a small lakeside community in northern Rwanda, when the 100-day killing spree broke out in April 1994. Radio announcements called for avenging the death of President Juvenal Habyarimana, an ethnic Hutu whose plan was shot down that April 6. They urged hunting down and killing ethnic Tutsis. Sebu Shumba, a Hutu, instead vowed to protect them. He was able to do so at least for the first two weeks before Tutsi defenders arrived to help. <laughs> None of our community leaders slept. We would do night patrols to ensure that nobody was hurt and nobody tried to start violence. Sebu Shumba, now 69, was determined to protect the thousands of Tutsis in Giti, he said of the violence. In most cases, they do it because the leadership supported those acts of evil. We took a stand and made sure our people understood that we did not support the killings. Townspeople had to fend off attackers from neighboring communities, including militias who tried to cross Lake Muhazi to come and kill. I ordered our residents to camp near the lake to make sure they didn't cross over. We used stones and other traditional weapons to overpower them. Only Tutsis fleeing other communities were allowed into Giti. Sewushumba asked boat owners to bring them across the lake to safety. Alphonse Nizeimana, then an 18-year-old Hutu, operated a boat. I personally saved close to 30 people. We would do rescues at night to avoid being seen by attackers. But the town did not escape violence. Naftal Ahishakie, Executive Secretary of Ibuka, the Association of Genocide Survivors, told the Voice of America he cannot categorically state there was no genocide in Giti. However, the level of involvement by Giti residents was very low compared to the rest of the country. Sebu Shumba acknowledges some deaths. There were no people killed under my watch in Giti. However, we lost some Giti natives who lived in other parts of the country. Many were killed because they came from Giti. There have been questions about whether the mayor's role was mythologized as part of the government's push for reconciliation. Emmanuel Rubangura, a Tutsi who is now 59, sees no exaggeration. He says he is alive because of Sebu Shumba's bravery. Our mayor took a lead in urging people not to kill their neighbors. Sebu Shumba praised Giti's townspeople for fighting evil. Embracing humanity, he says, is helping Rwanda heal wounds from 25 years ago. Edward Rema, VOA News, Giti in northern Rwanda.